today's top stories on the political front, Ross Perot drops out of the presidential race. In today's world news, Shanana visits Ferrovina Astananana, June buys macaroons in Cameroon, and Bob buys abazabas in Addis Ababa. In our top story for tonight, Lyman Moore turns 28. Have you had your coffee yet? I'll tell you that convenient has got some coffee. I've got to have my convenient coffee every morning. It's so hot and black and rich and good. That freshly brewed convenient coffee every morning gets me moving. I'm moving, 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 moving in my convenient cup. I'm moving, 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 moving. I think I'll have a donut. Today, Lyman Moore is celebrating his 28th birthday with his family and friends in Anaheim, California. We take you there now live, where the event is being covered by one of our correspondents. Chris Kuchenbecker reporting live with M Mike Davis. Davis in Anaheim. Mike, what were you doing <laughs> on July 18th, 1964? I was a sparkle in my father's eye at the time. <laughs> well, you heard what Mike had to say. He was a sparkle in his mother's eye. Michael, your parents were even This is... <laughs> well, this is Chris Kuchenbecker reporting live in Anaheim, California. Hi, Mom and Dad. <laughs> well, this is Chris Kuchenbecker reporting live in Anaheim, California for Birthday TV. We now have a satellite hookup with Ross Perot, where we will be able to talk with Mr. Ross Perot live via satellite. Mr. Perot, we've been told that you've dropped out of the presidential race. I'm not even a candidate. I see. Why is that? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Perot. We're going to have to interrupt this interview so that we can go live to Anaheim to find uh, there's some events that have, that have occurred at Lyman's birthday party. I think the American people would like that. Thank you. We take you now to Chris. We have a late breaking story. Someone else has arrived. I, you are, he is just getting. What am I supposed to say? Good. He's just getting too good. I don't know. I guess I'm playing with What am I supposed to do? <laughs> <laughs> um, interview? Yeah. yeah. We do play well together, though. Yeah. What's your last name? Huh? What's your last name? Rodriguez. Rodriguez? Yeah. Okay. Hi, this is Chris Kuchenbecker reporting live in Anaheim. <laughs> Mike, what were you doing? I was asleep. <laughs> oh, yeah, what, what were you doing on July 18th, 1964? 1964. I was probably three years old and watching, uh, it might have been the day that Chicago played the Dodgers where David Lopes was hitting three home runs back to back when he first got up. It might have been 1964. And I was cleaning the patio at the same time. I remember that. I was cleaning the patio. Well, Mom, Mom made me go in there. This is Chris Kuchenbecker reporting live from Anaheim, California for Birthday TV. I remember the day the girls came over for Bridge Club. I was so embarrassed because of lingering odors. Fish for dinner last night? Phew, Harvey's still smoking the cigars? Christ, did a cow shit in here? We have more live feed coming in from Anaheim. We take you there now. Hi, this is Kimberly Kuchenbecker reporting live from v Birthday TV. What were you doing July 18th, 1964? I was crying a lot because I knew that there was a baby coming and he was gonna be 
a headache for me. And I've had a headache ever since. Okay. By the way, what is your name? My name is W.C. Moore. And do you know what that means? What does that mean? Full and charming. Just ask anyone. <laughs> Are you going to ask me any more questions? Uh, now, let me, uh, a young lady, yeah. uh, who are you? I'm Kimberly Kuchenbecker. Well, who is that? That's me. Oh, that's you. Yeah. That's are me. you someone's daughter? Yes, I'm Mary Kuchenbecker's daughter. Oh, uh, do you have a father? Yes. Oh. What was his name? Byron Kuggenbecker. Oh, is that right? Yes. And who's your grandfather? Um, you. <laughs> oh, me? I didn't know that. No, but you were supposed to be somebody else. Oh, I'm supposed yeah. to be somebody else? No. Just in, Ross Perot is back in the race. We, we now go uh, satellite to satellite to talk to Mr. Perot. Ms. Bro, I understand you've re-entered the presidential race. Uh, if you want me to, I will. And it looks like they want me to. Excuse me for acting shocked, but I thought you just dropped out of the race. It's your conjecture is not mine. Clearly you just announced to the world that you decided not to run. I shouldn't have done that. Okay, so then you are going to run. Don't. I'll do it. Well, thank you, Mr. Pro. We take you now to Anaheim for the latest in Lyman's birthday. Ben Becker reporting from Birthday TV. What were you doing July 18th, 1964? Trying to pick, pick out the, our newest family member's name at about 8 o'clock in the morning. Wasn't that about right? What time was Lyman born? I don't know. We no longer have that data available to us. Was it a boy? <laughs> it was, was born in the car. Oh, yes, he was almost born in the car on the way to the hospital due to the fact that his father did not want to drive too fast or wait around the hospital too long. He had to get gas. And he had to get gas. Ruining my interview. Oh, I am sorry. I'm ruining the interview. I must turn it over to the interviewer. Oh, now it's mixed up. Okay. Is this a boy? Yes, it was a boy. It was, was yes. it? What? What's your question? Yes, yes. What color hair did he have? He had no hair. He was bald. <laughs> <laughs> this is Kim Kuchenbecker signing off from Birthday TV. Chris has been able to corner the birthday boy for an interview. This is Chris Cookmaker, reporting live, waiting for Lyman Moore to come out of the bathroom. doing on July 18th, 1964. What time in the morning? I don't even know when I was that born. That information has not been given to us. I see. Well, I think that day I was brought into this uh, great big wonderful world, I guess you could call it. Thank you. This is Chris Kuchenbecker. That was it? That's it? No. Thanks, Walter. He wants to say more. Mm. No, that's the end of the interview. That's it. <laughs> this is Chris Kuckebecker signing off for Birthday TV. We're, we're back in. We're back live with Ross Perot. Um, he's just informed us that he will not, I repeat, 
not be running for president. Ms. Per Mr. Perot, Mr. Perot, what made you decide to drop out of the race this time? Let's go back into my life. I don't ever compete to be second or third. So then you concede that you could not win the election? Well, have failed the people who with stars in their eyes went across this country and put me on the ballot. Mr. Perot, you're not going to change your mind again, are you? I don't think there's a chance. Thank you, Mr. Perot. Um, we take you now to Anaheim for an interview with another individual of similar caliber. Welcome back, sir. Wondering, what were you doing on July 18th, 1964? Well, I reckon that's right. That was the year I was abducted by aliens. I believe it was the day Kennedy was shot they took me. And on July 18th, they found me in this crater. It was in Butte, Montana. It's funny, they call it Butte Crater, but on the sign now, the E's off, so it looks like Butt Crater. But that's okay, because actually the crater's kind of shaped like a butt. It's got these two little mounds that kind of dig in, and this little crack looks like going right down the middle. And sure enough, they found me right on the crack. My parents were happy as could be. I don't really know what happened. I was only three years old at the time, but I reckon it hasn't hurt me none, you think? Thank you. This is Chris Kuchenbecker signing off for Birthday TV. Class attention. Forward march. Oh, I'd love to be an Oscar Mayer wiener. That is what I truly like to be. Because if I were an Oscar Mayer wiener, everyone would be in love with me. A big parade is so inspiring. Oh, I'm glad I'm not an Oscar Mayer wiener. That is what I never want to be. Because if I were an Oscar Mayer wiener, there would soon be nothing left of me. Oh, I love to be an Oscar, Oscar Mayer, Mayer wieners wiener. Oscar are all meat, all good meat, rich and complete meat protein, mildly seasoned to bring out all the good meat flavor. Everyone would be in love with me. Next week, you handle just the refreshments, Freddy. And now we take you to Anaheim. Hi, this is Chris Kuchenbecker wondering, what were you doing July 18th, 1964? Well, myself personally, I don't think I could have been doing very much because I wasn't born yet, but my parents had just graduated from high school, both of them, and they had just met. My dad enlisted in the Navy, and six months later they got married, and a year later than that they had my little brother, I mean my older brother, so I didn't do a whole lot, but they did. <laughs> Thank you. This is Chris Kuchenbecker signing off for Birthday TV. The national deficit is now four trillion two hundred eighty-six thousand three hundred and twenty-nine. And now we have found someone else that wasn't around when Lyman was born. This is Chris Kuchenbecker wondering what were you doing July eighteenth, nineteen sixty-four. Well, I'm sorry to say, Lyman, but I too was not born yet, so I was doing nothing. But happy birthday, Lyman, and have a good day. Thank you. This is Chris Kuchenbecker reporting. Oops. <laughs> reporting live from Birthday TV. You know, this was me five years ago, and it's still me. But I confess, I'm a waistline watcher from way back. Well, that's enough for today. Now for a lively lift. Ice cold Coca-Cola. There's no waistline worry with Coke, you know. Actually, this individual size bottle has no more calories than half a grapefruit. Mmm, another thing, the cold, crisp taste of Coke is so satisfying, it keeps me from eating something else that might really add those pounds. Coke's a natural, wholesome blending of pure food flavors. I guess that's why everyone likes the refreshing new feeling you get, only from not-too-sweet Coca-Cola. And no wonder, lively, lifty Coca-Cola provides a welcome bit of quick energy between meals. Thanks for a pleasant pause in a busy day. Oh, and remember, Coke is low in calories, too. Say, now, don't you get any thinner. Back via satellite with Ross Perot, who has just re-re-entered the presidential race. Mr. Perot, is it true that you are back in the presidential race? Yes. I 
What made you decide to re-enter? Maybe this is time for a weird guy like me. But Mr. Perot, you just dropped out of the race. It's happened maybe three or four times. And... I know. So what makes you think the American people will vote for someone that can't even decide if he's running? Well, that's a good question. And I've been so busy just responding to the press and responding to questions from volunteers. I haven't had any time to think. That, but that is a very good, fair question. Well, thank you, Mr. Perot. Uh, we now take you live to Anaheim. Reporting live in Anaheim, wondering, what were you doing July 18th, 1964? Well, Christopher, I was still recovering from the JFK assassination at that point. It, it was hard, but it's been a year. And uh, going into that summer, I was looking for many things. There was a lot of ball playing that summer. There was a lot of getting ready for my last year of junior high school. And it was a very pivotal year. Take it, Chris. Thank you. This is Chris Kukamaker <laughs> signing off. Actor, director, Bill Bixby. I know that people must feel their best to do their best. So, when I'm on the set and I have headache pain, I take Sanhedrin. Now here, at the world's leading headache clinic, tests have proven Sanhedrin's modern formula provides fast, effective relief from pain of headache, cold, or minor arthritic discomfort. It's safe and effective. So the next time you have a cold, do what Bill Bixby does. Take Sam Edrin, the extra strength pain reliever. Hi, this is Kimberly Kuchenbecker filling in for Chris Kuchenbecker, who is recently ill because I put his head in the toilet, I guess. Um, was there anything else you'd li add, like to add? To yes, there has, there has been very... <laughs> There has been very, been a lot of memorable moments with uh, Brother Lyman. I remember at one stage putting a bicycle together for Christmas, finding out that uh, it fell apart the following day. It was not the uh, assembler, it had to have been the writer. That's all I got to say about that. There have also been times in Vegas where he went on his own and tried to play pan or some oriental game instead of the basics, basic game of craps um, or truly a man's game in Vegas. That is all. Okay. Thank you for your time, Byron Kuchenbecker. This is Kim Kuchenbecker signing off for Birthday TV. Pro live via satellite, who tells us he has decided not to run. Mr. Perot, you're dropping out of the race again? Here I am, not even a candidate. I suppose you had time to think over that good question and decided it was a hopeless cause. That's right. You finally hit something that's right on target. So what have you decided is the end result of all this indecision? That the American people had lost confidence in my ability to... And? They don't want me. Good. Now stay out of the race. Wouldn't it be wonderful if things were that simple? Yes, it would be, Mr. Perot. Thank you. We're going live to Anaheim. Hi, this is Chris Kuckebecker. A little wet behind the ears because my sister put my head in the toilet. <laughs> Lyman Moore. Yes. Yes. I heard you were very lucky to be here. Yes. Why? Well, let me tell you this. Sliding into third base took up a little dirt, and I did this. This really hurts. It's hurting, it's really, really hard to bend my knee. I almost had to go in for arthroscopic surgery to take all those sand pebbles out of the wound that I have. Tell the truth, I was just walking down the street. I was just walking down the street and I fell off the curb and skinned my knee. It was after having a beer or two, or two. Then some of those bag people came and, and roughed me up a little bit and took all my money. But otherwise, we did win the game. We beat the first place team. Murph's Bulldogs. Woo! Yes! That's it. That's it. Thank you, Lyman. Thank you, Lyman.
This is Chris Kuckebecker, a little wet behind the ears, signing off. We're back with Ross Perot, who has just announced he will be running for president after all. Mr. Perot, I thought you said you weren't going to run again. Those statements are just not true. Now. Perhaps the truth is, Mr. Perot, that you are in fact a chronic and habitual liar. Compared to whom now? Mr. Perot, do you honestly think you have a chance in hell of winning this election? No. Perhaps you can explain the thinking behind re-entering the race. If you say, what do I think about when I have time to think? That's all I think about. I said, this is the phoniest, silliest process. See, I'm around processes all my life. And every other process, like I, I give a great, great deal of money to medical research. Well, the process of creating a good doctor is a logical process. The process of creating a good lawyer is a logical process. A good engineer selecting a, a person to run a company after many, many years. Selecting a person for the most important job in the world is goofy uh, theater. It has nothing to do with reality. Well, Mr. Perot, I guess that pretty much sums it up. Good luck in November. I think I need some cake. I'm going to Anaheim. Why don't you join me? <laughs> Extreme close-up. Warren Quick. Close Wait, I can't even focus. Warren Quick. Here, it's something for the cameraman. <laughs> Birthday boy eating frosting. Ooh. Oh, Diane, you like this one? <laughs> oh, <laughs> did, you get, did you get my father on camera? Yeah. Can you tell him about that we made him miss a, an archery yeah. tournament? Uh-uh. What happened? I think he was supposed to play archery with Uncle Lyman. Not a tournament. But you had, you had to have a baby instead? Yeah, I'd have a baby. <laughs> Sounds right. One that he wasn't expecting in the first place. <laughs> Considering that he had his tubes tied after he had me. I was madder than hell at first, but then it all turned out all right. You know. After he smacked around. He had somebody to mow the lawn longer. Yeah, he's a nice guy, but, you know, they don't... Yeah. They don't sell for much. <laughs> Can't get much money for me. <laughs> and I like this frosting. Yeah. Cream cheese. Yum. Yum. Gross. Can I put it on the machine and put it in your mouth? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is it on? Yeah. If we leave before he calls, he said to meet him Do you have a question one. for me? I told um, him I meet him at gate one. What were you doing July 18th, 1964? I was at home, and all of a sudden, I turned to my mother, and I saw her do this. And I knew that it was time to take her to the hospital, because that little baby that was sticking out like this was ready to go. And you know what happened? What happened? That. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let that be a warning. Pro-choice. 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 Yes, me, please. That's a good one. You, you don't care. And pineapple sugar and a piece of Anything cake. else you'd like to say? I oh, love my brother. You do? Uh, sugar. And where's my cake? Cake and sugar? What kind of sugar? What kind do you have to choose from? Uh, or both. Uh -oh. okay. well, let me do it, Kim. Let me Press do it. the red button. Let me do it. I'm done. Okay, ready? Yeah. Um, One more thing I forgot to tell you. Yeah. Well, not Before that. Lyman came around, I was the baby in the household. <laughs> I was the one that got all the attention. But now, now, no one pays any attention to me anymore. It's all for Lyman. He's the cute one. No one even remembers my name. It's just, oh, yeah, Lyman's brother. You know, what's his name? <laughs> they forgot my ice cream. <laughs>